Good afternoon, everybody. I am Alex Johnson. I am the president of Plano West Rotary. Thank you to our Rotary meeting on Tuesday, July 13th. Well, to kick off this meeting, I will introduce our amazing new Sergeant of Arms, past president, Steve Watton. Take it away, Steve. Thank you very much, Alex. You failed to mention better than the old Sergeant of Arms. That was a given, Steve. <laughs> no, I'm going to have to start initiating fines again, too. We need some money in the till. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday today. Um, it's nice and sunny out. It's unseasonably cool compared to what it normally is. It's normally blistering else. hot. So I don't think you can fry your eggs on the sidewalk today. Let's get our uh, brags going. Mike, since you kind of spoke up first, uh, we're going to let you brag today. I'd like to brag on, on the club and all the new members we have. I mean, goodness. <laughs> it's like coming in from life, off the planet to the earth and we have 50 new members. And, and I think we need to have a social. Everybody has to attend so we can match a face with a body. With uh, <laughs> and, and uh, anyway, it's great to have uh, all these new members of the club. Do I just mail you my dollar or bring it by your office? No, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to have it on file, Mike. Uh, I'll catch up with you later. I'll do that. Okay. Thanks, Steve. My house goes on the market next Tuesday, so I will have more free time. I'll remember that. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, Alex. I appreciate that. Lisa, anything you want to talk about today? Um, oh, uh, yeah. Actually, um, my son, my oldest son, Nathan, which a lot of you guys know, um, had a, we had kind of a surprise visit. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I was cooking, or evening, I was cooking dinner and got a text from him. And he said, Mom, I got on the wrong bus from Houston. Instead of going to Austin, it's going to Dallas. <laughs> 24 years old. <laughs> so, anyhow, he's asleep in, in our house tonight. And I don't know when he's going to <laughs> so, That was quite... Quite the surprise. That's the son that recently got engaged. Yes, my my youngest. <laughs> is he in Dallas? Is is he? Yes, he, he lives. To I know he is. What about her? Oh yeah, well she, right now she has a UT. She'll be going back in the fall. Ah, yeah, well I think I know why he's in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Beamendurfer. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, our air conditioner may need some servicing. And for those of you that may not know, Steve has been serving, I mean, servicing our air conditioning probably for 40 years. But I would like to have the opportunity to survey your house if you're going to put it on the market. Maybe I can get some money back. I will be had to, happy to tell our realtor that you're available to survey. Anything I can do to help? Yeah. You mean you're not? Who wants to brag? So, Steve, you're not using our new member, Ollie Hancock, realtor? You know what? I couldn't even see her down there in front, behind Fred there. That's okay, Steve. Hopefully, you've had a long relationship with your realtor, and that's why you're returning to him or her for their services. Right. <laughs> Glenn, you want to say anything? So, uh, um, we're about to head to for a family vacation here in three or four days. So that's kind of a future brag. So I'll brag more when we get back. So I'll pray that was. Anybody else want to brag today at the Greek Isles? Hey, Steve, we're going to have to wrap it up. We have a full agenda today. So thank so you. Very got four minutes. All right. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> Sorry thank you very much. I didn't get to brag. We'll be a great sergeant of arms. So now we're going to move into our prayer. Is it going to pop up, Zane? 
everybody knows this is the first time I'm running the media in person. So we're getting everything fixed up. And we are going to have our amazing member, Benton, is going to lead us in prayer. Take it away, Benton. Let's pray. Father, thanks for another great day and uh, for our Rotary Club. And thanks for your uh, provision for us, for this, the good food everybody's eating at Greek Isles and home and out. out. And we thanks for our new members, Lord. And we ask that you would use us to serve our community in, a, in unique ways. In your name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Brittany. Now I'm going to ask um, Randall is going to lead us in the pledge. Absolutely. Yes, could everyone please, I guess at Greek College, you can stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and everyone else. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Awesome. Thank you very much, Randall. Glenn, you're up. Now we have a very important message from our club member, Glenn Thornton. He's gonna talk about uh, something that we need a club member to step up for. So I will let Glenn talk. Okay. I have five minutes. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about Balloon Festival. You may have heard us talk about that. We have a lot of members, so first a little history what we do, what we've done for over 30 years is we make funnel cakes. If anyone's ever eaten a funnel cake at the Plano Balloon Festival, it came from us. We're the, we're all, we're, we're the only one allowed to make them there. And we've been doing it for a long time. And it's been our, for years, it's been our flagship. It's been our big fundraiser. Um, and the club really, you know, obviously got behind it and still does. And for 10 years that I know of, since I've been a member, uh, Mike Walker has been leading that off and on for, not off and on, on for 10 years. And so um, this year he's stepping down after 10 great years. We wanna thank you, Mike, 10 awesome years. And so um, one of the things we're needing is to somebody to pick up that task of basically like project manager for for our funnel cake. Um, so that's like a project manager. You've got people you're, you're working on, you're, you're working on, on relationships like with the, with the uh, city of Plano and the Bloom Festival. You've got supplies. We own a big trailer that says funnel cakes and everything on it. We have the equipment. We've done this before. Um, it's coming up in September. It's always September, like the third week of September. And it, it's a like a, they, they've cut it back a little bit because of, of the kind of getting going after COVID. So it's like three days, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but there's bread before that and just clean up after that. And unfortunately, we've kind of got out of the mo mood uh, uh, role of doing funnel cakes because last year was COVID. Two out of the three years before that, it rained out. So what, four years now, we've done it once, I think, in 19, maybe it was the year we did it last time. And uh, it netted like 17,000 bucks, we did great. But we're looking for someone to pick up that role of, of leadership. And you know, it's, we'll train you, we've got people here that's been doing this for a long time, but you know, you don't just pick it up for this year. This needs to be like a, like a three-year commitment or something. And while that's a very busy week in September, the other 50 weeks you're off okay <laughs> but it's a it's a busy prep and busy work and you're, you're coordinating this activity you have people to do stuff that you're coordinating um we're going to try to make this by the end of july because it is coming up soon it's two two months away we're in we're in a we're in funnel cake country so we need to have this uh hopefully someone step up by the end of, of july and if you are interested in learning more uh, contact me or, or Alex and, and Mike here. He's here at Greek Isles. He, he said he will sit down with whoever is interested and tell them everything they need to know. And so uh, let, let us know if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. So like he said, if you want to lead a major project, actually it's our largest fundraiser, 
step up and you will have a lot of people in the club help you do it. You've been doing it for 30 years and the guy that did it for the last 10 is still here. And so we will help you do it. So now what we're gonna do is, keep in mind you guys, this is all new. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the foundation of it. So Zane is gonna go ahead and start a really good video talking about the Rotary Foundation. Take it away, Zane. There's no sound. One second. The Rotary Foundation is one of our major ways that we're increasing our impact as a Rotary Club. And as I mentioned last week, uh, one of our goals for the club is to donate over $10,000 to the Rotary Foundation spread between the annual fund and the Polio Plus fund. And that doesn't mean it's all going to come from our club. We also have a number of campaigns in place that will be soliciting donations from the outside. Last year, we collected at least $2,000 from members who weren't in our club, so we want to expand on that. But it does start inside. As we remember, Rotary has an initiative called Every Year Every Year. That's for, we achieved it last Rotary year, we want to achieve it again, where every member in our club donates at least $25. So our board of directors is already committed to donating that, and most have already made that donation. So we ask you as club members, to make the same. And if you have the ability of doing more, please do. We had a club member that's already donated a thousand dollars. And so he will be obtaining his all her fellows. So uh, it's not just in the club, but if you have friends, if they want to give to the greatest um, nonprofit in the world, that's the Rotary Foundation. And that is us. And we support all other nonprofits. So you know you can't get any better than that. So with that, I'm going to lead into the member moment, and I'm going to hand this off to Roxana, and she's going to take it away. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. My name is Roxana, and welcome to our membership moment. And uh, today is a very, very special day because we have uh, a member that is going to talk, talk about her. And... Um, so her name is, hold on a second, I'm going to share my screen. There she is, Jennifer. Jennifer, welcome to our mem membership moment. And so this is your time. Tell us about yourself. Hi guys. So I am Jennifer Scherzer. Um, I have volunteered with you guys since last summer and joined Rotary a couple of weeks ago. And can everybody hear me okay? Because I'm in a weird room. Okay. Um, so we, I'm actually from, originally from Alexandria, Louisiana, and we moved to Dallas in 
2000, I moved with my husband, Luke. Um, we went to school together at Louisiana Tech University in graphic design. So I've had several random graphic design jobs um, and most recently was a senior art director for JCPenney till 2012 and then left that job. And then 2014, my husband and I started Plano Magazine and in May of this year, I retired from that job. So I'm on sabbatical now, which means I get to focus on my family and volunteering and the nonprofit boards that I'm on, which I really love doing. Uh, I'm involved with Leadership Plano, so you can always ask me questions about that. I'm on that board as well, and I was in class 36. I'm on the board of directors for Impact, which a lot of people have not heard of, but it is an arm of my possibilities. So I would love to tell you all about that if you ever have questions. And I'm on the Arts Advisory Board for North Texas Performing Arts. And we also love to volunteer with the Heritage Farmstead Museum. Um, as far as hobbies, I enjoy photography, reading. I do play the piano and I love going to see live music, which hopefully we can do more now since things are open again. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. And yes, as you guys know, today her family has been volunteering with us over the last year. And so we're so excited that she joined. And I'm going to do a little reminder. Thank you, Zay. Good deal. And so I will also let you guys know she is already helping our club out beyond just the volunteering. She's looking at other things. And as she mentioned, My Possibilities, we're actually working with the My Possibilities leadership team to identify future projects for our club. As part of, as I mentioned out, we want to uh, expand her reach to those with disabilities and impact in that community. So um, I'm excited for uh, what we're doing there and some of these other project ideas that Jennifer is currently working with Shannon on. So we have a lot of exciting things in the works. Well, next I'm going to do the club business component. And so you Everybody has received, we have new member information for Regina and Courtney, but we had another new applicant a couple days ago. You'll be notified on Friday, which is Patrick Pope. So we will vote and induct all three of those on July 7th. So remember, give them the big Plano West Rotary welcome, text, email, call, get to know them. They'll be participating in service projects and attending our virtual meetings over the next few weeks. And so we look forward to inducting them. I also want to remind everybody, we still have 16 club members who have not filled out the Rotary waiver. We got to get it done. We're 76% we're done. So 16 more, you received multiple emails on it. It's the online form, you know, DocuSign, just knock it out. So we have all that taken care of. That's really important. I also want to remind everybody, uh, our district roundtable, which is the first roundtable of our district governor, Max Duplant, who you will get to know soon. It's this Saturday, July 17th. Um, the link, if you want to get the information uh, to tell you where it is, you don't have to sign up, just show up. So um, I, we highly encourage members to do it. It's a great way of finding out what's going on in the district. I won't be there. I'll be in Cancun. It'll be one of the few that I miss, but you definitely should go. Uh, actually, because I'm not going to be there, there's more reason for you to go. We need to have a representation of Plano West Rotary Club. I also want to remind everybody, uh, our board bought two tables for the district award celebration on August 5th. So there's still seats. These tables are for members only. If you want to bring your spouse, you need to buy a separate ticket for them. So there's still spots left. We, we know we've automatically won a few wards. We expect to sweep. If they're fairly judged, we're going to sweep another ward. So I want our club to be there loud and proud to uh, just celebrate the fantastic year that you guys had last year. So um, sign up. Like I said, it's free for club members. If you're going to bring your spouse, you have to buy a separate ticket. We give the information inside the sign of genius on how to get it for your ticket. But sign up. And then last but not least, everybody got their dues invoices. Um, please pay them by July 30th. That's actually a requirement according to our bylaws. So we want you to take care of that as soon as possible. You can use that link in order to pay via PayPal or credit cards, or you can mail it to our post office box as well. 
So either way. Let's talk about our service projects. This is something, the best part about the meeting to me, because to me, this is bragging about our Rotary Club, because Rotary is a service organization, and we are a service club. That's why we have all the success. So we're always doing service. So we're gonna talk about the service we did last week, because we do on average of, actually, we did on average of six um, service projects a month last year and I think this month we've had five so we're kind of below our average and last week we had curbside meals that Catherine is doing such an amazing job it's really six projects in one day because we're at six different locations and she's doing it this morning so we did a great job on our curbside meals delivery meals to a families in need partner with the school district that was last Tuesday so then if we come up our newer service projects, we have curbside meals today. So if you, you see a number of people are wearing our volunteer t-shirts because at, I think it's 10 o'clock, they were at Shepton, Bowman, Catherine. What's the other school? Our, our biggest one, Clark, Clark High School. Clark, yeah, the biggest one. So they were at Shepton, Bowman, and Clark High School this morning. And then they're also going to go to the same three high schools uh, this afternoon. So we, we basically we need on average of 21 volunteers every day. If you um, haven't signed up already, go ahead and do it. Show up. It's an hour and a half out of your time. It's a lot of fun. Um, Catherine or different members of our team will tell you what to do and sign you in. So you can still do it today or this afternoon. And then once again, we're doing it next week. Basically, we're doing curbside meals every week until school starts. So I think August 3rd is the last week that we're doing. And then Plano ISD actually has new feeding projects for us to do once school starts. So we will be, Shannon is working with Catherine and James for us to roll those out when the school season starts. I also want to talk about our COVID awareness project where we partnered with the city of Plano. And we have one neighborhood left. Mihir is leading that team. So this weekend, I think they have about seven volunteers. The more they get, the faster they could get it done. I think there's about 700 homes. And this is where we are providing COVID awareness education to the residents. And the city of Plano asks us to target the Hispanic communities in Plano because that's where the lowest vaccination rates are. Since we started this project, the city has said, because of what we're doing, we have increased the Hispanic vaccinations in Plano by 9%. Well, that's an obvious impact. That's people that are not going to the hospital, that are not being infected, that are being able to work, take care of their family. That's a direct impact that our Rotary Club and our volunteers are doing. So we have one more neighborhood. I think it's the neighborhood surrounding Meadows Elementary. And so sign up for it. It's easy, it's fun. They knock it out in less than two hours, like all our service projects. So that's this Saturday at 9 a.m. Please sign up for that project. And then last, um, later in December, Glenn Thornton, the king of... <laughs> Man, I just moved on to Christmas. <laughs> later in July, we have Glenn, who's the king of Adopt a Highway, who I think he started this four years ago. The, sec the second time you're president of the club. So every other month, we're cleaning up a stretch of highway on Avenue K. We cap it at 10, so I encourage you to sign up. When we get 10, I think we get it done in an hour, Glenn. Hour and a half. Oh. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's early in the morning, but it's important. I'll tell you, I, I used to do it a lot. And you clean up Saturday morning, and you see litter in the same spot you cleaned up on Sunday. It's just, it's a travesty how people disrespect our environment and our city. So we're making a difference. And then we also do the other cleanups and partner with the city of Plano. So sign up for these projects. I think if you just look at what we have left, we have one, two, three, four more projects left for the month of July, not December. And uh, Shannon is working on posting uh, projects for August. Is Shannon online now? Can anybody see? No, we can't see. I think the last time I talked to her, she has had 11 service project submissions. And so we are not lacking 
uh, needs to serve in Plano. So it's very exciting in what we're going to do. So we're actually doing very well in time. Yeah, this is kind of amazing. So what I do want to talk about is our club. You guys are just so amazing. I, I talk to a lot of Rotarians, not only just in our district, but also throughout the United States. And I, I work with Rotary staff on a lot of different areas. And you guys are the leaders of Rotary. I mean, possibly we might have been the fastest growing club in the world. Those numbers don't come out until mid-August, um, just because of the whole accumulation. And what makes it exciting is, it wasn't one particular reason why. It's because of everybody. We, we have so many leaders, so many champions, so many volunteers in our club that you are all out doing things to impact our community. You know, we are making measurable impacts and it's very exciting. And this year we have greater things in plan. I'll tell you, one of the things I'm most excited about is our homeless global grant. You know, the idea that we are going to be making a substantive impact on homelessness in Plano is just very powerful. And we will be the first and only local global grant in District 5810. And that's not why we're doing it. You know, why do we do everything? We do it because we want to impact. We want to make change lives. And so, I, like I've said many times, even though we are the fastest growing Rotary Club in the United States, you know, we're the eighth largest Rotary Club in North Texas, it's not about size. It's about our impact. It's about how we serve our community. And so, as I mentioned before, don't invite people to Rotary. Invite people to volunteer with us. And if they volunteer with us, if they like us, they're going to join us. Well, it's been working really good so far. And so let's keep on. Let's focus on what's important. That's serving our community, not just racking up numbers. Now, if those numbers are number of service projects and lives impacted, those are the numbers that I want to rack up. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our guest speaker. Actually, I'm going to turn it over to Zane, who is going to introduce our guest speaker. So let me give him time to catch up. And so Hello, everyone. Anyway, Zane. Uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing Max, uh, our district governor, for a um, little over a year now, just serving in various district capacities. Um, she just brings a whole lot of vibrancy and energy to everything she does. And uh, she's previously served as um, assistant city manager for the city of Irving and um, held the CFO position for the cities of Irving, Beaumont, and Groves. Um, so she's a CPA who uh, has a bachelor's of business administration from Lamar University in Beaumont. And in her spare time, Max enjoys spending time with her grandchildren, traveling, and competitive dancing. And yeah, overall, I really love Max's vision for the district. And I think um, she will really propel us to new heights. So take it away, Max. Thank you very much. And so, Zane, I am going to try to share my. Oh, I need the mic, which is here. I am going to try to share my screen if that works. And I think it will. Things are beginning to work. How about that? <laughs> Let's see if we can. There. We even have it. I'm going to shrink this so I can actually see my. Okay. Now I can see my screen, and I think everybody can hear me. Okay. So I'm going to ignore this message. And yes, my director is telling me which way to look. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. I will glance down at my notes from time to time, but it's a pleasure to be here with you. Y'all blow me away with all the exciting projects that you have, the growth that you have. And in some sense, I feel like some of the remarks I make today is going to be like speaking to the choir, but congratulations for the great job that you are doing. So this picture that you see, is at International Assembly. Every year, all of the 
incoming governors gather together at a place like it should have been in Orlando. Uh, but it was virtual this year. And so you always get to take a picture with the incoming international president. So this is my picture with him. And so those of you who are in the room, Zane knows me online. Um, I'm not very tall. I'm five foot only. So every time I tried to take the screenshot with them, I was towering over them. It's like nobody's going to believe it's a picture anyway. It's a real picture. This was as close as I could get. So I look about twice as wide. But um, anyway, at least I'm not taller than them there. And for any of you who ever strive to be a future assistant governor, you know, there's always a place, or this is just a side note, there's always the place that you, you get, and all the district governors were the same place. Well, I'm making all my club visits in July and August. This is Texas. I'm retired. I have a closet full of blazers, and the last thing I needed was a new blazer. So just a hint for the women, you can get the fabric made into a dress. So Rotary is advancing. What can I say? Today, I'm going to talk to you about the Rotary International President's Initiatives, the District Initiatives, Club Focus, and a little plug for the International Convention that will happen next summer in Houston. So this is a screenshot of uh, the announcement of our theme for this year. And you can see Alex already has the banner up. So our theme is Serve to Change Lives. And you can see the Benoi hand reaching out in service. I think it's a really cool logo, actually. So you have the hand that's reaching out in service, and you have the globe in the hand. The multiple colors in the globe represents the diversity throughout our membership, the diversity of the members that we want to bring in, and also the diversity of all those that we serve through our community projects, through our global grants, service across the world. So I think it's a great theme and it's a great logo that we have to work with this year. One of the things that Shaker said in his remarks to us is that we need to inspire members to participate in projects that have a measurable and sustainable impact. Each club should conduct a Rotary Day of Service. Now, you guys have weekly days of service, so um, Y'all are already on board. I'm going to talk about a particular day of service a little bit later. And I also congratulate you on the fact that you're already measuring your results. Um, we need to do that to be sure we can see that we're achieving more and more. But um, many clubs are not doing that yet. You're, you're ahead of the curve, so congratulations. Another quote that we heard from uh, Shaker, and I know this has been attributed to Mohammed Ali, it says Shaker on the bottom, but, um, and I think others even before Ali said, service is the rent I pay for the space I occupy on this earth, and I want to be a good tenant of this earth. So this is a little way to guide us through all the projects that we do and what we need to think about as to why we do this. And, I know you're busy involving others in your service project. So here's a, another reason you can give others to participate in the projects. Another um, emphasis that Shaker has this year is on diversity, equity, and inclusion. He encourages to focus efforts on empowering the girls and ensuring their access to education, resources, and services and opportunities so that future generations of women leaders will have the tools they need to succeed. We know even in this country that oftentimes women are not paid the same rate for, this, for doing the same work as men. And there's other opportunities that are a little bit more difficult for women to achieve. We're making progress, but not fast enough. And besides that, Shaker is in India where he sees a lot of other things happen where um, girls don't have the same advantages and actually have some strong disadvantages compared to the boys. So it's fantastic that he's made this an emphasis for the year. Rotary's belief is that diversity, equity, and inclusion is critical to all that we do. And we need to treat this as a compass to guide us in our work. And uh, for those of you who did tend into our district assembly back in April, 
I had asked Howard Templin to give a presentation on diversity, equity, and inclusion because they don't all mean the same thing. And the short summary of it, and some of you may already know that my hobby is dancing. And so I'm gonna use this as an analogy. Diversity is when you get invited to the dance, but inclusion is when you actually get to dance with others once you get there. So we want to be sure that we include all of these aspects and the projects we do, the membership we bring in, the leadership that we develop. And um, with that, Rotary will become even stronger in the future. The next thing that Shaker is focused on is in promoting membership. Now, again, if everybody was tripling in size each year, this wouldn't be anything that I would need to talk about. But the fact of the matter is Rotary has maintained level, Rotary worldwide membership has just been level for the last 20 years. Doesn't matter what year you look at, it rounded to 1.2 million. Sometimes it was a little over 1.2. Right now it's a little bit under 1.2, but it's not changing. And so his challenge to us is be a catalyst to grow Rotary membership to 1.3 million by July 1st of next year. And if we have just a handful of clubs doing what you are doing, we will absolutely get there. So keep up the good work. Why do we want to talk about growing membership? Another one of Shaker's sayings is, each one bring one. And now that you're at 66 members, uh, just think, if each one of your members brings one more member this year as a guest, and with your track record, a large percentage of those who can choose to become a member of your club because of all the exciting things you do, the accomplishments you have. So it enables you to have even more service projects and more accomplishments. So that's why it's important each one bring one. And the other thing he says is we need to grow more to do more. There again, you truly were on um, Alex's comments, you had um, projects every single week coming up. And uh, as you grow your membership, you'll have more people to help you work on those projects and expand your reach of the people you can serve. So now that we've talked about Rotary International's goals, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the district goals. I have set four for the year. Uh, maybe, <laughs> I'm looking at it closer, increase our district membership by at least one net member, conduct a district worldwide service project relating to human trafficking, begin implementation of our strategic plan, expand our reach, and increase foundation giving by at least 5%. So why am I talking about membership? In contrast to what great things y'all are doing. We're losing membership overall in the US. So even though I talked about worldwide members being level at 1.2 million, the fact of the matter is membership in the United States is dropping each year. Meanwhile, India, Asian countries are growing in membership and that's why we're staying level. We are not staying level in this country here. And besides that, within our own district, over the last four or five years, each year we've been using, losing about 3% of our membership. That's 75, 78 people a year. And we can't afford to lose that much membership anymore. Um, so it's very important to continue to grow because if we don't change this slide, the question becomes where will Rotary be in 30 years? Who will continue this great work? And let's not even go that far into the future, just five years, 10 years in the future. If we don't stop the slide, grow our membership, then um, we won't have people to continue this great work. Now, I promise to talk about another day of service besides all the things that you're already doing. So at International Assembly, when Shaker, the day that Shaker announced his theme and his initiatives, we had a virtual reception. Um, all of the governors in this zone, my class, um, 
and we started talking about some of the challenges that he put to us and it's like okay each club has a day of service that makes a lot of sense we should be doing that but just think if every club in the district chose the same day for a day of service maybe we could get more media attention and then we went from there and thought well what if every district in the zone chose the same day of service too how much more attention and impact we could get and our zone goes from canada down to south america it's the middle third of the u.s and so it's this squat that kind of comes down the center and so we're talking about huge impact and then someone else said well shaker talked about empowering the girls what if our service project had to do with stopping human trafficking? That would definitely help the girls and not just the girls, it will help the boys too. There are a lot of boys that are being brought into human trafficking. And we know this is happening right here in our own communities. And um, it's a problem. It's a problem that we need to educate the public on. So with that, the goal of all of the district governors in our zone is to conduct a day of service to help eliminate human trafficking on January 15th coming up. Um, we've already had one educational session at our district assembly back in April to help our membership understand what the problem is. And um, we will have another session. I've been talking to potential speakers at for future roundtables. And I want to get ideas of what clubs can do to be effective, but just a couple of things to throw out is continue the education. Perhaps we can put flyers up in restroom stalls, at bars, grills, restaurants that have especially opened up late at night and help educate and help give numbers to call. So that's a couple of ideas. We're gonna come up with some more for you, but I hope in addition to all your other service, that you're able to participate in that day of service. The next thing that I've set as a priority is actually implementing our new um, strategic plan, our strategic action plan. So the district's always had a plan. The last one was reviewed about four or five years ago. And since then, initiatives from Rotary International have changed. And so it was time to look at our plan again. So back in the winter, we pulled together about 23 people from across our district. We made sure we covered the north part of our district, the south part, the east, the west. We wanted to be sure we had representation from large clubs, small clubs. We had almost an even split of men and women. We did our best to bring in racial minorities. We covered young Rotarians, um, more experienced Rotarians. Alex, you were a part of it. Zane, I think you were a part of it. So you had great representation from your club. And through those multiple discussions that we had, we came up with four initiatives. And I'm a big believer in a strategic, a strategic plan is not worth anything if you don't constantly check your progress against it. So at Roundtable this year, we're going to have five or 10 minutes each month where we talk about what progress we're making in each of these initiatives so that they stay front and center and we are focused on making progress in these areas. So the first item that was brought up was developing a collaborative district club relationship. We were hearing from the clubs that they felt like they weren't getting support from the district. They weren't appreciated by the district. And then we were also hearing from district leadership, well, wait a minute, we're providing education on this and this, and not many people show up. We're providing a newsletter, um, talking about events that are coming up. So I think what's really happening is um, our communication needs to be improved. It, not that the relationships can't be improved as well. They do need to be. But we also need to work hard on our communication. I am doing my best to make sure that most communication comes from a single source, and that would be Pam, as she sends everything out, because I've heard from so many Rotarians who get so much information. I don't have time to read it all, so I end up deleting it. And so if we have everything coming in the newsletter or coming from the single source, 
everyone knows, pay attention to this and um, hopefully it will help in our relationship. Grow and diversify our membership and our leadership. So I've already talked about membership, but the thing that I want to add to this statement is that um, it's important to develop our leadership with that same diversity and inclusion that we've talked about in membership. Um, if we want to bring in diverse members, they need to feel like there's a place for them to grow in Rotary. And so um, that's why this is one of our um, initiatives. Enhance engagement through impactful service projects. I've already talked a little bit about service projects and, and you've got some great things going on. And then finally, build our public image in the Rotary brand. There are so many great things that Rotary does across the world. And I think decades ago, the community recognized Rotary as accomplishing a lot of these things. Now, oftentimes we're accomplishing our service projects, but no one really recognizes that we're the ones responsible. So promote Rotary every way you can. Alex has his shirt on. I know as you do your projects, you're wearing your shirt. Glenn has his um, cap on. So you know, continue to do that and set the example for others too, because we've got to promote um, a little aside is uh, there were a couple of occasions where I was trying to schedule something and I told a friend of mine, no, I can't get with you at that time and have a rotary meeting. And then a few weeks later, no, we need a different time and have a rotary meeting. And finally, he asked me, why are you doing roadside assistance? what so think about it how often do you see the rotary side on the side of the highway because rotary clubs are cleaning the highway right um he didn't understand what rotary was and with the logo being a wheel he thought it was an organization that did roadside assistance and couldn't figure out why i was doing it I don't even change my own tires. I am not doing roadside <laughs> assistance. But that point is we need to promote our brand. Um, expanding our reach. So the chart you see, if you look all the way to the right, leadership, leadership, and this is where I was talking, inclusion in leadership as well as membership. Look at the last year, 76% of the worldwide membership, uh, leadership was men. Only 24% were women. We need to change those statistics. Age, another way to be more inclusive. Um, over the last 20 years, the district governors have all been over the age of 60, except for 5% worldwide. I'm not helping that statistic, and the two district governors that are going to follow me here in this district are not helping either. So the point is, every club needs to help develop their young professionals to leadership roles within Rotary, within your club, so that then they can move into positions at the district and even beyond the district zone. It's so important to develop that leadership. Now, the good news, if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, and uh, I guess you'll recognize me, but with me, hopefully you recognize Jennifer Jones. Jennifer will be the first ever Rotary International female president starting July 1st of next year. She is energetic. She's a lot of fun. We were obviously cutting up at this Zoom meeting a couple of years ago. Um, she brings so much knowledge to the table. She has done a tremendous amount in the foundation area. So we really do have some great things ahead, but she's only one person. We need to continue this development. This slide uh, brings in some of the points I was saying a little bit earlier. When you look at 2015, 30% of our Rotary membership was in Asia, 30% was in the US and Canada. By the time we got to 2020, Asia had grown to 33%. U.S. and Canada were only at 28%. The rest of the world stayed about the same. Why is this important? Our Rotary International Directors are selected kind of like Congress. 
So about four or five years ago, the zone lines were redrawn. We have less coverage here in the U.S., less representation. Rotary was founded in Chicago, Illinois. We want to keep our boys and guiding how Rotary continues in the future. So one more reason why membership here is so very important. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see uh, for the year that ended in 2020, we had 145,000 new members in Rotary, and then we lost 142,000 that very same year. 18,000 of those that we lost hadn't even been a member for a full year yet. My next goal is increase foundation giving by 5%. We have made such terrific strides relating to polio. We're down worldwide to only two countries where polio exists. And based on the latest information that just came to me Friday, only one wild case of polio in Afghanistan, one in Pakistan so far this calendar year. We're six and a half months into it. This is the best news we've ever had. But we need to continue those foundation contributions so that vaccines can continue to be given. We can come make sure we don't slide backwards, we continue the great progress that we've already made. Besides foundation helping with our polio initiatives, it also helps with our water, sanitation, hygiene, both in this country, there was a great project that you were involved in in the Navajo country, and also um, other countries like Mexico, Africa, Africa's continent, I know. But anyway, across the world, there's a lot of things that we have going on uh, that is sponsored by your foundation dollars. And the more we contribute from our district, the more that comes back to us in those district grants that I know you're using for your projects. Club focus, okay, this is where I really feel like I'm speaking to the choir, but it's important no matter, even the things you do well, look at how you can do them even better and those things that are challenges to you. What can you do to make them a little bit less challenging? Continue to assess your club, engage your current members, connect with prospective members. Oh, we're all doing a great job, but don't, don't let up on your efforts there. Follow up on membership leads. Make everyone feel welcome when they enter the room, no matter if they're a new member, potential member, guest. Continue to develop your club. Y'all are going to reach a point where you're going to have to think about starting a new club, but you know, you're, it's, it's terrific with what you're doing. Stay current, go to rotary.org, set up your account with them if you haven't already, so you'll have access to all the information. Coordinate with your great AG that I know is online right now. And Alex, there, I, I know I don't need to tell you this, but you're going to be applying for the presidential citation, and I know you're going to be getting it. And that's just kind of a shameless uh, plug for my club receiving it in the past. And my final point today is to encourage you to come to the Houston Convention. Um, it will be June 4th and 8th. And if you've never been to an international convention, this is where you get such a terrific feeling for what happens worldwide, all the great projects. So usually the mornings are filled with sessions 28,000 people in the room, and you hear about these unbelievable projects that just warm your heart, give you chills all at the same time and about the great accomplishments. And then in the afternoons, there are breakout sessions, but I usually go to the House of Friendship, which is a huge room of booths set up from representatives from all over the world. So you get to experience their food, their spices, their music, their clothing, their jewelry, um, all of the wares that their country is known for, it's just a fabulous way to get to know people from around the world and truly experience their culture. Um, in the picture, you can see the brown bear, Orby, and uh, Houston, of course, has no surprise, chosen a space theme, and they have chosen a mascot, which is that little brown bear in his space suit. Now, the little boy holding the brown bear is Grandchild number six for me, uh, last fall, he chose to have his first birthday party at a space-themed area park. It's kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese, all based on space up in Seattle. And he loves brown bears. 
So I made him my personal mascot, my favorite astronaut to help promote uh, next year's convention. I hope all of you will join me in Houston. You can still get reduced um, registration fees through December 15th. Hotel rooms are filling up quickly. So if you think you may go, but you're not sure, book a room now. You can release it um, early next year and not have any penalties if something comes up and you can't make it. And uh, finally, if we get enough interest, we're looking into the feasibility of having a bus take a group of us down to Houston. So that takes care of all my remarks. It's been a pleasure being here with you. And right on time, I'm handing the mic back over to you. I will be glad to answer any questions you have. Questions? Well, I know this is probably online today, but I am a new network, and I was wondering if you represent the district. So, what are yes. those boundaries? So, um, Rotary is, so clubs feed up to a district, and in our case, District 5810 goes from pretty much the Texas-Oklahoma border down to Ennis, and from about Greenville over to Capel. And within that, we have currently 63 clubs. Um, I think 63 is the current count because there is a club that started their charter this morning. I signed the paperwork for it last night. They're being chartered this week. And last I heard, they're starting with 49 members. They're trying to get that 50th for their original charter, but they were at 49, I think, last night. So um, we are doing some growing in our district and we hope that we can outnumber our, our growth outnumbers our losses because my club is more of a legacy club. And uh, while we were the same size as what you are right now, about 14 months ago, we lost eight members to age, not COVID, but age. And so, um, that's another reason why it's so important to help develop our our new leadership. Got totally off subject, but anyway. So zones are. And zones, I'm sorry, or groups of districts yeah. batched together. So in Texas, we have about 12 um, districts, although two of them are not included in our zone. They drew some really weird lines, like they left Oklahoma out and kind of did a weird line around it. But um, it does, our zone goes from Canada all the way down into South America. So um, we cover a lot of territory. Thank you very much. We present to our speakers. Certificate where we have actually already made this donation. We have donated and, and we named a district 5810, as you asked, $200 towards the Rotary Folio Plus. Plus. So, for the audience, I'll read an appreciation for your time and program. Uh, Plano West Rotary will donate $200. Actually, we've already donated $200 in the name of Rotary District 5810 to Rotary's Folio Plus Fund together with the two to one matching funds through the Bill and Melinda Gates, that $200 turns into $600, which will provide polio vaccine for about a thousand children. And especially District Governor Max knows this, but for uh, those in the audience, Rotary is using its polio infrastructure to aid in the vaccination for COVID-19. So her donation will support that effort. And so we really thank you very much for speaking to our club. You bet. It's very exciting that we've been able to make it. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Excellent. Well, everybody, what we want to do now is next week, I will not be here. Yay, for you guys. You actually have our all-star Zane Carlson, who's going to lead our meeting. But unfortunately, our in-person guru, Lynn Thornton, won't be here either. <laughs> so we are only doing virtual next week, unless somebody wants Lynn to train them very quickly <laughs> to do all this, but I don't think it's possible. So it's Zoom only next week. Zane is going to be running it. And we actually have the executive director 
of Sherry Messer for City House. And those that don't know, City House is the Collin County uh, Youth Shelter. I was on the board of it years ago. I know uh, James Thomas, our club member, he's on the board now. And we do, we are working on a global grant in the area of homelessness. So homelessness is a, a cause, not only just a global grant, but we do a lot of other projects in the area. So we're looking forward to hearing from City House. Uh, like I said, I'm a former board member. They do a lot of great things for the kids of Collin County, and we look forward to maybe identifying some projects that we could do and support uh, the kids that they serve. So with that, I am going to ask our new member, she's gonna come up and lead us in the four-way parts. So Molly was just inducted last week. Last week. But I've known Molly. Molly's been volunteering with us for what, probably six months now. This is my first time. <laughs> it's always been on the phone. <laughs> and so Molly, you get the pleasure of leading us in the four-way house. Okay. Well, thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to come here and be in person, especially after a whole year of COVID and <clears throat> virtual meetings. But I'm excited to be the one to lead you in the four-way test today of things we think, say, or do. First thing, is it true? Is it truth? Secondly, is, is it, it fair, fair to all concerned? concerned? Third, will, will it build goodwill, goodwill and, and better friendships? friendships? And fourth, will, will it be, be beneficial, beneficial to all concerned? concerned? Good job, Molly. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for joining our meeting today and listening to our district governor. And once again, go to the district roundtable, um, which is going to be on Saturday. It's going to be in Irving. If you go to the district website, you'll see where it's at. It's free. You don't have to sign up, but you get to meet a lot of great returns. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.